Hello people, how are you? Yes, how are you? Tell me the truth now. Don't lie. Don't say fine. No. Don't say okay, because if you say fine or okay, we know what that means. You're just saying it to be nice. <laughs> Um, I hope you are really feeling good. Um, I am feeling much better for doing this recording. And, um, yeah, sorry about that intro, but, um, I was just thinking, I don't feel good. I don't feel fine right now. And sometimes it's like that, isn't it? Sometimes you feel like things are never going to change and you want them to change now, like yesterday. And it's awful when you start to actually believe that things might never change. They will change, but what if they don't change to what you want them to change to? Can you live with that? And can you imagine how that would be? Because sometimes I do that, um, which is not good, I know, but I'm a human being. And, um, and it makes me feel a bit depressed. <laughs> um, and I was thinking recently, what if it doesn't change? And it gave me this feeling of <gasps> horror. Um, and I haven't got a bad situation at all. And then I quickly went back into thinking it is going to, because I'm, I'm just so sure it will. And um, don't be tricked by objective reality, making you feel that uh, life's always going to be like this. Sounds very miserable, doesn't it? But um. I don't mean that there's no good. It's just as human beings, we're always aspiring to better, aren't we? And sometimes that can be a long time coming. So I just had one of those weeks when I felt this is a bit too long coming, actually. And um, I just felt stuck in my job. And I like my job. I'm a teacher and... I love children. I think I get on with them very well and I understand them. And I have some ability, some talent where when I make up a story for them, even if it's the most boring story in the world, um, which I try never to do, only if there's um, some adult listening in, not wanting it to be too creative. Um, and tell on me for some weird thing I've spoken about. <laughs> um, what am I saying? Yeah, so they listen and they listen really spellbound. And that's such a beautiful gift. I'm very grateful for it, that I can have all the children listening to me willingly. <laughs> Not because... Um, I'm strict and they're a bit scared or they're being threatened with something, but because they're um, lost somewhere in their imagination. And that's a beautiful thing. I love that. And recently I've been telling stories to nursery age children and they are usually very noisy and crazy, but they all listen and it's lovely. So. Yeah, just to give you some idea, I don't hate it at all. And I love the contact with children, but I just feel I need to do something else as well, not just this. Um, yeah, I just need to do something with the talents I've been given, which I believe are um, reading and writing and just speaking making up stories. Those are the main ones. And then I think, well, we're all, we've all been given different talents, haven't we? And there's a reason for that. 
and we're meant to do things with them. That's our purpose in life. And God's the one who's given us our talents, so he would want us to use them. And so my time is coming when I'm going to be able to use them fully. And I do tell myself every day, I am confident. I believe in myself. I know I have all the power within me to achieve my dreams. I say that over and over again, and I believe it. And I know that we've all got this power within us, um, which is God. And God in action, the imagination where we can imagine what we want and truly be in that feeling and bring it to pass in that way by bringing what we want, which is in the invisible, into the now, the present moment and live in that. Um, and that's how we will manifest it. And it needs total belief. If it's just a nice idea, then when um, the shit hits the fan, so to speak, it's just going to go out the window for us. And that's what happened to me. Um, I, I was at work and I'm going to just make myself more comfortable, actually, because it's nice talking as though um, everybody's here, but I should relax a bit more. Okay, I hope you're in. You're interested in hearing my um, tales of woe. <laughs> it's not really a tale of woe. Um, I just got angry and worked up at work, so I obviously was not trusting in living in the feeling of the wish fulfilled in that moment. I was triggered. Um, it was an emotional reaction. And I was thinking, I am sensitive and people can say things that are hurtful. I can't really avoid that in objective reality, but I could avoid reacting by, you know, saying something which is going to make my situation worse in the end. And it, it actually, um, gives it more reality if you're reacting to it. You're seeing it as um, the only reality in that moment. And everything else is crowded out. Um, and we need to see objective reality for what it is, which is really the results of past thinking, of past imagining. And so, in a simplistic way, objective reality is um, the evidence of the past. Evidence of past thinking. We just, just call it the past. The past. Even though um, when we're in the present moment, it is part of our experience, isn't it? So it can be a bit confusing that, but... It's not strictly the present moment. The present moment is our consciousness. When we live in our consciousness, we're in the present. When we're living in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. In fact, then we're bringing the, um, the well, the future, the idea of the future. Because it's a concept, isn't it? So the concept of the future into the present moment. And that's how we make it the present moment. Um, it's an interesting idea that that's, that would be good to explore further, um, that everything has to be brought into the present moment to exist in the present moment, which makes total sense, doesn't it? Um, because there is actually only the present moment. And so if we want something to manifest, it has to be brought into that because that's um, reality. 
um, the truth. Reality doesn't really cover it because I always think there's lots of different realities, but the truth is beyond that, beyond um, different planes or levels or whatever, like um, objective reality, dream reality, I don't know what else there is out there, you know. Um, anyway, getting back to objective reality, um, we need to remind ourselves every day that it is It is real, but it's not real as well. It's the result of past imagining, as I said. So in a way, it's it's the past. It's already happened. Nothing we can do about it now. It's manifested. As have certain situations, they need to happen. But we have the power to control our response to them. But sometimes it's going to be situations that will really trigger us and we will react. And by reacting, we're making it real, making it more solid. Um, if we can see it for what it is, then we'll never react in a heated kind of way. We'll be more um, like interested observers. <laughs> um, yeah, curious and seeing very clearly what the situation is, what's happening in front of us, which is a powerful position to be in, isn't it? To just have that cool, calmness, even if the other person is getting worked up. And that's more likely to bring them back down. And then you can actually have a reasonable conversation because if two people are angry, you're not going to get anywhere, are you? And then it's just a battle to see who can shout the loudest. And because that's considered the winner, isn't it? The person who gets the most angry or something. Um, so we need to remind ourselves every day that objective reality is the past and the present moment is consciousness, being conscious. And so if we practice being conscious every morning through meditation on the breath, that will help us when a difficult situation comes our way. And when I was um, following Buddhism very fully, <laughs> as in it was my life, it was my everything, I was meditating a lot, but I got it a bit wrong in the beginning because I was, I don't know what I thought exactly, but I probably thought it was about clearing the mind and not having thoughts anymore. And possibly having some kind of experience, which is possible. And But the, the main reason I was meditating, which I didn't realize at the time, was much more practical and down to earth. It was practicing being in the present moment. And I never knew it. Um, was practicing being conscious, being aware of thoughts coming into my head, and getting distracted by them, then coming back to the breath and just bringing myself back to the present moment. And the result of that after a while is that you notice when you're distracted more often in everyday life and you bring yourself back to the present moment which is where you want to be because that's the only place you can really um, do things um, consciously, do things for yourself and others. But in our case, I suppose, as Neville Goddard followers, 
we should be bringing ourselves back to the present moment so that we can focus on the feeling of the wish fulfilled more often. Just for the sake of being in the present moment, it's um, much nicer than being lost in thought all the time, much more relaxing. But our objective is to live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled and in the new concept of self. So we're seeing ourselves how we would be if we achieved our dream and feeling how that would feel and becoming that person. And then we're bringing it to us. And we need to be reminded of that throughout the day. And the best way is to practice meditation so you're aware and then bring yourself back to the feeling of the wish fulfilled and assume it's done and tell yourself every now and then it's a fact. It's a fact because that's going to give you more of a, a sense of sureness and certainty about it. And it gives it a light touch, which I think is very useful. So yeah, sorry, I've gone off on a massive tangent, I think. Um, but I don't know where I was to start off with. And I like that. But it, it was about um, getting caught up in objective reality. I know. Um, I was saying I had a bad week the other week. And I was rattled by somebody at school who really triggered me in many different ways. Um, I felt a lack of respect, um, a lack of professionalism. I found it embarrassing the way this person was behaving towards me in front of others. All things that um, I would always avoid at all costs, um, the idea of self being very self-conscious in front of others and the feeling of the situation not being fair. And then it feels even harder to take because it's not fair. Just like the children, um, they get really worked up when they think something's not fair. And I don't think we're very different as adults. It's, it's there. So all these things going on and this person um, just speaking to me very in a very patronising way as though I was a child. And um, just, uh, I suppose, telling me what to do when she didn't have any right to do that. And it wasn't possible anyway. Um, anyway, it just made me feel really angry and that it was very unfair. And also I was pushed for time, so I I just had to go. So it was kind of half finished too. And um, it took me quite a while to calm down inside. That's the point of it. And it was very quick as well. It took me by surprise. And once I gathered my emotions, I could see that I, I should have just, I don't know what I should have done, but removed myself from the situation sooner and, and not keep on um, replying to her. I don't know, it's easy to see in retrospect, isn't it? Um, but I just think when something doesn't feel good, try and remove yourself from the situation. Because when you're feeling very emotional, you could very easily say something that you regret and make it worse. So it's obvious, isn't it? I mean, you know that, but sometimes when you're in that, you forget quickly. So remove yourself. And then when you've calmed down, remind yourself it's objective reality. It's something that's that's come about as a consequence of your past imagining. And if you can really take responsibility for that, that you've brought it into the world, then you'll never be a victim again. And 
you won't get so angry because you'll you won't see it as being so black and white that it's the other person's fault you you might have some kind of reaction inside but you will be thinking i've brought this into being in some way and obviously not on purpose we don't want these situations i mean it could be as a as a result of um imagining for your dream it could be um some it could be some way that it's going to happen some weird way it, it contributes to your dream so don't dismiss things um yeah objective reality it's a funny one isn't it it's the world of the senses and because we can see and hear and touch it, we see it as real, even when we don't see it as real. When we got it clear in our mind that it's not as real as what, as what we first imagined, we're still misled by it because it's so powerful. So I really believe that we need to um, tell ourselves every day, tell the subconscious mind, remind ourselves that objective reality is the result of the past. And I haven't come up with a catchy little phrase, I'm afraid. I think I'm just going to think objective reality is the result of past thinking, past imagining. Objective reality is the result of past imagining. Don't take it seriously. Live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Live in consciousness. Live in consciousness. Yeah, I don't know. It's never going to be very pithy, that one. There's too much information in it. If you come up with anything that's very catchy, that can help people remember um, not to get um, deceived by objective reality, then put it down in the comments because it'd be very helpful. Don't be deceived by objective reality. Um, yeah, it could do with being a rhyme as well. That would be good. I'll try and think of something. I don't know. So the basic message is that we need to keep telling ourselves things every day if we're to go further along this path. And that's that's my experience. And when I make these um, alleged mistakes, but maybe they're not mistakes. As long as you learn from things, they're not really mistakes, are they? But it's not really what I want in my life. So when something happens, I have to think, what could I learn from this, how could I do things better? And um, don't allow myself to leave the truth. It's one thing knowing the truth intellectually, and it's another thing knowing it, um, well, practically, putting it into practice. It's another thing putting it into practice. It's, and it's funny how emotions can really, um, they're so powerful, so intense, they can, that they can draw us away from the truth. And we have it very clear in our minds what the truth is. Yet, when we get fired up, even if we know, yeah, I shouldn't be doing this, the emotion can really drag us in. And yet emotions are there for a reason. We can't reject them. And I can't even say um, it's okay to feel this. Just don't, don't, not, don't react to it. Don't react to it. Um, don't show it. Just feel it. Sometimes there is a purpose in anger. It can really just cut through. 
It can be very harsh, but it can contain the truth. And sometimes it might be the right thing to just say something with that, the energy of anger. It's not always a damaging thing. So I think you just got to just judge in the moment, really. And that's so we get back to the original point about being fully conscious and practice being in the present moment through meditation. But please um, remind yourself every day not to take objective reality seriously. Do not take objective reality seriously. And if you can do that, you will be blessed with whatever you are imagining for. I believe that 100%. Even when I come out of it and I have my doubts and I just think, like, and usually that's from the feeling that things won't change, getting demotivated. And it's like I'm just playing because I know it's true on a deeper level. I know it is. But I just have to look at it again and think, but what if it isn't? Can I cope with things staying the same? And um, I think, yeah, I'm not in a bad position, but it's not going to anyway. So that lessens my fear too. And then I get back into it. But I can be in it far more um, and I can experience a lot less stress in the world if I see objective reality for what it is and live in the truth and live in love. So um, let me know what you think of that. And um, yeah, just set your set your day in the morning by imagining the scene that implies you have achieved your dream and feel how that would feel. And then tell yourself, I'm going to live in the state because I'm righteous. And that means living in the state you want to be in, the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So you live in the feeling and you tell yourself from time to time, it's a fact because you're assuming it's done. And, um, but before that, you tell yourself, today I am not going to take objective reality seriously. I'm going to deal with situations knowing that it, it's in the past, it's already happened. And I'm going to focus on the future by bringing it into the present and living in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And then when difficult situations come up and you're suddenly conscious of what's going on, you tell yourself in your head, remember it's just objective reality. And the more that you're able to do that, and get back into the feeling of the wish fulfilled, the more you're living in the truth. And I do believe it's going, whatever you're imagining for is going to manifest quickly. Because you're living in it, how can it not? Um, I feel like I haven't been talking very long, but I just love talking about this kind of stuff. But it's almost 30 minutes, so I better stop. And um, thank you so much for listening. If you've got this far, I really appreciate that. And please let me know what your what your thoughts are. And um, I might do another one because I just feel like blathering on a bit more. <laughs> oh, yes, please like. I always appreciate um, any likes I get. And... Um, I always imagine blessings going to the people who've liked me, always. And yeah, please subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, thank you again and that's it from me.
Bye.